Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Agnes Parish. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We have the following announcements. Please add Mary Ellen Berggren and Kristen Paula to the Bulletin's Prayer Corner. As we prepare for back to school, it is a great opportunity to sign up for altar servers and cross bearers. It is an excellent opportunity to get to know the clergy, learn more about the Mass and your faith. With the servers, we would like to start with having high masses, offering an opportunity for incensing and candles. Training will be held in the church between masses on Sunday, September 11th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and after the holy hour of Eucharistic Adoration on Thursday, September 15th from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Are you looking for a way for your child to get involved during Mass? The Joyful Noise Choir is open to singers and instrumentalists in grades 2 through 12. Our first rehearsal is this Tuesday, September 13th in the church from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Please see the bulletin for dates and details. The St. Agnes Pastoral Council is now accepting nominations for six new members. Forms can be found in today's bulletin in the parish office and in the narthex. Please return forms by September 19th. Thank you. Please take a moment to check your electronic devices to make sure they are in silent mode. Please stand and together let us recite the vocation prayer. Let us pray. O oh Jesus, we believe you are truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist. We beg you to send your graces to inspire the young men and women of St. Agnes so that God becomes so real to them that he lives within their hearts. We pray that you will touch their souls and enlighten them to the true purpose of life on this earth. We especially ask that you call our men to the fulfilling life of the priesthood and permanent diaconate so that our church may live on. O oh, Mother Mary, please present our prayers to your Son. Amen. Our gathering song can be found in your gather book, number 698, O oh God Beyond All Praising. Oh, I'm sorry, 598. <laughs> Verses 1 and 3, number 598.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. We now celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in this um, Mass, we offer it for John and May Balzanos. It's requested by son, Pete, and family. We also continue praying for those who ask for our prayers, especially those who are sick. Monsignor Paul, Mary Blythe, and all the other members of our community, of our parish, that God may bring healing to each and every one of them. And also we pray for each and every one of us that we may gain the needed grace so that each one indeed may follow our Lord Jesus Christ in a, in a profound way. So let us praise God today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of the sinners of Israel. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we Glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone, then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. and 
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these I am the foremost, but for that reason I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addresses this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, will not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he finds it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be no more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having 10 coins and losing one, will not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, a man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that land, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat the fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, 
How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and sandals and his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and he has now come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older brother who, be, who had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fatted calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and he has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. It's good to be with you again. I appreciate all the wishes of condolence, prayers, cards, and kind words with the passing of my mother. When I went to visit her, I would ask how she was doing, and she would always respond, better now that you're here. She was having a lot of health issues, and as we believe, she'll have a better life in eternity. This weekend, we also remember that sad day on September 11, 2001, where we saw loss of American life in our country due to terrorist attacks. It's been 21 years, and we've recovered and are grateful for the service of our military, police, fire, emergency workers, and all those who continue to show the sacrifice and love we should practice as Christians. Last year, if you remember, we actually had a blue mass and bless some of our local fire and rescue equipment for our area. Every day, we have to face decisions, some good and some evil. Today in the gospel, we have three great parables about how God sees us and the overwhelming love he holds for us. If we look at the setting, Jesus is teaching and making disciples. The scribes and Pharisees start to ridicule him for hanging out with these sinners rather than the good and worthy people. Rather than condemn their folly, Jesus shares three parables. The first parable, the lost sheep, we see the example of how precious each one of us is to Christ as the good shepherd. In the second parable, with the lost coin, we again see the search for the lost. It shows a similar message, but also shows that we are a set, a people, one body of Christ. It reminds us how important each one of us is to God. And the third parable, probably one of the best known parables in the Bible. Great teaching parable for the message of Christ's love. It's understandable by a, by a child, but has meaning for even the most advanced theologians. So we see three main characters. The father, the older son, and the younger son who becomes the prodigal. Reckless and wastefully extravagant. The prodigal asks for his inheritance and goes out and wastes it 
on sinful living. Maybe he went to L.A. or Las Vegas. He chooses a life of pure selfishness with complete disrespect for his father and family honor. At rock bottom, eating and slopping with the pigs, he has a moment of clarity and realizes his sinful ways. He's transformed in that moment and converts to one who is humble and contrite. He returns home and throws himself on the mercy of his father. Next we see the father who parallels God in the parable. He, he allows his son to go, mourns for his loss, and then celebrates the younger son's return with full restoration as a son, no longer a prodigal. And finally, we have the older brother. He's often ignored in this, this story, but he's a key character we'll examine. As we look at the three, I think we can understand the younger son. He was a sinner, he repented, and he was restored. However, let's spend a few minutes looking at the father and the brother. First, the older brother. When I was younger, I saw his position. The, young, the older brother says, I've been good. I followed all the rules. And my no good brother shows up. He gets a party when he returns. It's just not fair. But as we unpack the story and look more deeply into it, we start to see the prodigal is not the only sinner in the story. The older brother lived in the comfort of his father's house. He had full advantage of all the wealth, but he was not grateful nor thankful for his gifts. He did not accept the full love and gifts from the father that were offered. For the father, he represents God the father in the teaching. Merciful, loving, and compassionate. He restores his son. He also reminds the older brother that he did not take away anything from him and that he still has all the love and gifts he had received. It's his estate. To help us grow in our own faith and continue our spiritual journey closer to Christ, let's take a few moments to put ourselves into the parable. First, the older brother. Are we grateful of the blessing God has given us? Do we feel cheated when a sinner repents and is welcomed back? Honestly, sometimes I do. It's my worst nature, my human nature. We have to constantly remember the humility and compassion Jesus shows in his human experience. Forgive and be grateful for your life and be open to the love that's always showered upon you. As the older brother, we must also remember that he has not lost anything. He'll still, inherit, he'll still inherit the estate. The younger brother's share was already taken. So now let's look at the younger brother. Are we open to conversion and a change of heart? Have we sinned and not humbly approached God and the person we sinned against to ask for forgiveness? Have we been selfish, thinking only of ourselves and looking at consumption and personal pleasure? I think we all have at some point in our lives. We need to go seek reconciliation. God's mercy and grace can overcome any sin. If we do carry that sin, we're living that inferior life, similar to the prodigal, living with the swine. God wants us to use our gifts in service to others. We are made to love and serve each other. And finally, the Father. In our baptism, <clears throat> we are baptized as prophet, priest, and king. And as a king, we have the power to make decisions that affect others. We dole out rewards and punishment. Think about it as you're parenting. You tell your kids, eat your vegetables, and you get dessert. You can't go out until you clean your room. Those are simple examples. But on a broader scale, are there prodigals in our life that we need to reach out to to offer healing? Are we loving and supportive of the older brothers who always do as they're told? Are there neighbors and coworkers that we can help by sharing our faith 
for some financial support for those in need. So this week, this week, reflect on those questions. And in closing, I leave you with these thoughts before we receive Jesus and head out into our daily human experiences. If you are the lost sheep, follow the good shepherd Jesus and listen for his voice when you are lost. He will find you. From the second parable, find that lost person in your life that completes the set. And finally, remember to offer that mercy as the Father did and be willing to be humbled and seek forgiveness and accept God's overwhelming love and mercy. Good afternoon. My name, my name is John Perger. <clears throat> I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to you about the ministry of the month here at St. Agnes. It is a men's program called That Man Is You. We are in our sixth year and it is titled All Things New. You may maybe have seen the video that we presented last week. I would like to invite all men 18 years of age and older to join us for an hour and a half on Saturday mornings. We start at 8.30 a.m. with good coffee, good donuts, and good fellowship. That is followed by a 30-minute video by some of the top theologians and evangelists in the country dis discussing the issues that we all face today. We then have an open discussion on the topics that are presented for the day. You are free then to add to the discussion or just sit back and maybe take in the viewpoints that the men present. That man is you has molded many men into strong ma male figures the world so desperately needs. We are all on a journey. Jesus has laid the path out in front of us. He also knows that it is a difficult one and that we need the support and help of each other. Through the program, That Man Is You, I have become a stronger man in my journey by becoming a stronger man in my faith, my family, my parish, and my community. I would like to share a quote from Mother Teresa of Calcutta that helps guide me on my journey. She was once quoted as saying, God does not require you to be perfect. He only requires you to try. So men, try us out on Saturday morning. Let us come together, have some laughs, and strengthen each other on our journey. We have a table set up on the back. Uh, we have informational handouts. Uh, I'll be back there with Ken Glick after Mass to answer any questions that you may have on the program. And I thank you for your time. Please stand. Let us now express our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to the Lord, confident in His promise to meet our every need. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer for the church. May God guide and strengthen her efforts to spread the gospel. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the victims of September 11, 2001, and their families, that they may be freed from pain and fear, and we pray for an end to violence and terrorism in the world. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Lend your strength to all first responders who are there for us in times of crisis, fear, and hurt. Give them courage to continue to do this important work that they are called to do. Protect them, O Lord. Extend your shielding hand over them and comfort their hearts when they are tired and heartbroken. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who worship and share community here, May the Holy Spirit come to enkindle in us the fire of his love. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for John and May Bazanos, may they enjoy eternal peace and happiness before the throne of God. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, who sent your Son to bring us new life, we ask that you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song during the presentation of gifts can be found in Breaking Bread, number 738, Stand By Me. <clears throat> Stay. 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the, may Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands the for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and for all his holy church. Look with favor and love supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept this your servant's offerings, that what each has offered, has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. With the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and from rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of our holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, a bread of life in a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church and spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory now is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and from our divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Just be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not Lord. worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song can be found in Breaking Bread, number 369, Beautiful is Your Love. Bismillah, Polyben, Warroh al Kudus, Ilahin Wahid Amin, sign of the cross in Arabic. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank Father Ted for his prayers and support to the Christians of the Holy Land. Thank you, Father. We started this mission, Bethlehem Christian Families Ministry, 20 years ago. I used to have hair at that time. 
But in these 20 years, Bethlehem has suffered from three wars, five economic shutdowns, a 20 feet high segregation wall, and the effect of ISIS attacks. But we survived, thanks to you, to other parishioners and other parishes around the diocese and other dioceses. Bethlehem Christian Families Ministry sold more than $5 million worth of olive wood carvings, contributed more than $200,000 to the Patriarchate of Jerusalem and other charity organizations across the Middle East, and most importantly, received millions and millions of prayers. So thank you, and God bless you. Now, Bethlehem has a new challenge, which is all you know, the pandemic. In fact, Bethlehem has been shut down because of coronavirus since March 5th of 2020 until a few months ago. And as you know, Bethlehem city is a tourist city. About 80% of the people there depends on tourism, such as hotels, about 72 of them, restaurants, about 120, souvenirs and carver shops, about 400 of them. Since March 5th of 2020, until recently, barely any income. And we don't have financial support, government support, or unemployment compensations like here. So basically, they are by their own. In my meeting with Archbishop Batista Bizabella before Corona happens, and his chancellor, Father Ibrahim Shumali, back then, they told me that the Christians in the Holy Land needs the letter P three times. The first one stands for prayers. So I'm asking you to continue to pray for your brothers and sisters in Bethlehem and Jerusalem, especially in these difficult times. The second one stands for pilgrimage. I invite you all, now it's possible to visit the Holy Land, especially Bethlehem, if you have the time and the resources. It's a life-changing experience. And the third one stands for projects. And one of those projects is the olive wood carvings from Bethlehem. This tradition go back to the 12th century pass from father to son, generations to another. We, the Catholic families of Bethlehem, express our love and our faith to Jesus through these carvings. I invite you after the Mass and see what I to do with those carvers, artists, and their families' work. No donations, please. We want our carvers to get back to their work. Again, again, I'd like to thank Father Ted for giving us the hope to continue our mission by visiting you this weekend. Thank you, Father. At the end, our message is a message of hope. Persecuted believers are not forgotten. Christians' persecutions will not be ignored. And Jesus still has the victory. Thank you and God bless you. First responders, do we have? Nothing? No one? Anyway, so no one, I guess, thanks be to God that uh, perhaps we contribute also uh, to the needs of other people by in any other means. But we continue to pray for the first responders. We remember them uh, every day. Uh, so that they too may continue uh, serving uh, the community that they are in. So thanks to them. Thanks, my my our gratitude to them. Uh, so that each and every day of their lives, they too may continue uh, serving our community in a wholehearted way. Thanks to our first responders. Anyway, so let's stand. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take position of our minds and bodies, so that it affects in not our own desires, we always prevail in us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Thanks to, God. to God. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Have Father. A good Let us go forth singing, Lord of Nations, God Eternal. The words can be found on the screen. <laughs> <laughs>